Hi, good afternoon. My name is Akash Ramjit. I'm here with Mr. Dharam Singh. Uh, we both work at the Center Gerson Issues in Kirib. Now, at the Center Gerson Issues in Kirib, we propagate a wide variety of fruits and ornamental plants. One of the plants that we do there is the avocado plant. And today, we are going to tell you how we propagate this avocado plant. But before we tell you how we propagate the plant, I want to tell you a little about the avocado itself. So, the avocado is a fruit that was discovered in South America and it was distributed throughout the Caribbean region and to other areas by the early settlers moving up and down. It is a pear shaped fruit, and the skin of the avocado, which is the exocarp of the fruit, can vary in different shades of green, it could be light or dark green. According to the variety, the skin would also be smooth or rough. Now, when it ripens and matures, it could change to different shades of yellow, purple, or even red. All avocados tend to have yellow flesh and one seed. Now, the avocado is a good source of natural fats and other essential nutrients. One notable thing about avocados to keep in mind is that they contain a substance called persin. A person is slightly toxic, especially to animals that are producing milk. So if you have a farm and you have cows or goats that produce some milk, you don't want them to be consuming the leaves, the roots, the skin, the seeds, or any part of the avocado plant, because this could cause them problems in producing their milk. Now, the botanical name of, our, of the avocado plant is Percy americana. Here because it's pear shaped and American, of course, because it originated from South America. There are over 15 known varieties. In Trinidad, there are four to five main varieties that are cultivated, but at St. Augustine issues, we only deal with the Pollock and the Ruler, and we will talk about those in the next slide. Now, we have here avocado out in the field, showing the green skin, the yellow flesh, and the large seed, which is a characteristic of all the fruits and the varieties. This one here is a lula, the lula variety, and you can tell that by the rough appearance of the skin, the large seed, which is tight inside the flesh of the fruit, and the darker color of the leaves and the skin of the fruit. Now, as I said, the two varieties we do at St. Augustine is the Pollock and the Lula. And here we have some differences between the Pollock and the Lula. The Pollock would bear from July to October and produce large fruits, some of them up to 15 pounds. And most trees will be up to 300 fruits, and have and the fruits will have a smooth, shiny skin, and most of them would ripen green to yellow. Now the fruits of the pollock tend to have a little lower oil content, and the seeds tend to be smaller and loose, almost shaken inside the fruit. The Lula variety you now, it bears a little bit later in the year, between November to December, and they produce smaller fruits, but they produce multiple fruits in small bunches. So you might get two or three fruits in one bunch. Now, Lula, the Lula variety can have up to 300 or more fruits. 
And the skin of the ruler, as we saw in the picture, is rough, dark, and they may ripen green or red to move in coloration. Most rulers have a higher oil content, they're more fatty. If you accustom it in avocado, you, you people would say it's buttery. It's more desirable in terms of taste. In the Lula variety, the seeds are larger and tightly set, as we saw in the picture. And an interesting thing to note is that the flowering pattern of the Lula variety complements the pollock. The flowers of the avocado change from female to male according to the time of day. And with the Lula variety, the flowers would change to male while the pollock is female. This would mean that you will get more fruits being produced because more of the flowers will be pollinated. So when you're planting your avocados out in the field, if you plant one Lula variety avocado plant to each pollock plant, you would get a higher amount of fruits because they have more cross pollination taking place. Now, another thing to note is that there are some major pests and diseases of avocado. In Trinidad, most of us have seen avocado, avocado trees, but the leaves have little circle, brown circles on them. This is caused by the avocado lace bug. It's known to science as pseudo sister pussy. And they would cause the leaf to appear burnt, brown spots and they will greatly reduce the growth and deal of the tree. So you want to control them if you want to get nice avocados. And the way you control them is by applying an insecticide with the active ingredient, imidal acropid. The other notable disease is root rot. This is caused by the Phytophthora fungus. And this is also controlled by drenching with a fungicide containing dimetromorph and also avoiding waterlogged conditions. By avoiding waterlogged conditions and making sure the soil type you use is well drained and that the drainage you produce in, in your field takes the water out of the field quickly enough so it doesn't cause a problem. And from time to time you may see brown spots on your avocados. This could be because of mechanical damage when, when the wind blows them and they rub on each other on the tree or it could be a pest or fungus, but most times the minor brown spots do affect the quality of the fruit. It's still edible. All right, so let's talk about the propagation of avocado now. The preferred method used at center grass and issues is grafting. And the type of graft that we use is the terminal graft. It's also known as the wedge graft or the cleft graft. And the reason why you would want to graft your plants is that a grafted plant would bear fruit in less time, three years, once the conditions are optimal. This is a plant from a seed, which was not grafted. It could take up to 10 years, six to 10 years. The next thing about a grafted plant is that the parent plant, where you took the material that you grafted onto the plant from, could be selected based on what characteristics they are true to, meaning that whether the plant is resistant to a particular disease, it's more adapted to a certain soil type, or in most cases, they are selected based on the type of fruit and the amount of fruit that they produce. So how we graft avocado plants is we list it out here, right? So we collect the fruits, and after we collect the fruits, we sow them. I want to sow them and they germinate. We manage the seedlings. We get them to a position where they could be grafted. Now the process of grafting is where we take the shoot system, the top of the plant, where the plant grows out of the seed. 
and we call that shoot system Messiah. We merge it with the root system of the seedling, which we now call the rootstock. After we do the grafting process, we take further care and allow the young plant to develop. And then we harden it into a younger plant that could be planted out in the field and tolerate open field conditions. So the sun and the wind and all these things you'll find in the open. Now, when we go to collect fruits, we prefer to collect fruits from a tree that is called a seedling tree. It's a term we use on the station. And a seedling tree is a tree that is easily accessible. It doesn't show any signs of pest or disease. It looks healthy. It looks like it's, it's growing actively. And it produces fruit with large seeds, just like the lula we showed earlier in the picture. That is the ideal seed to use as a rootstock because the large seed will have a, a greater amount of nutrients stored to produce a young plant. Now these seedling trees will also be selected because they have an expansive root system, a nice big root system. And as we know avocados have a, a shallow root system, so if we could strengthen that root system it will be in the best benefit of the grafted plant. And we also want to select trees that had have a long life. So this tree here in this picture is only stations and Augustine trees and it's believed to be over 60 years old. And it does display all the qualities that we list here. And the next thing is that we will not we will not want to take from a grafted tree. Now we collect fruits from June to September. This is the time most of the avocados would be available. And the way we select the fruits is that they should be mature in appearance. It shouldn't show any signs of disease. It shouldn't show any signs of pests being present inside or outside. Now, the way that you tell when an avocado is ripe is that it would be dull in appearance. And based on the variety, it will change color. Could be a, a shade of yellow, or a shade of red, or mauve. Sometimes they might even stay green. But the ultimate test is that when you touch them, it'd be soft, but they wouldn't be mushy. And it's not advisable to squeeze them unnecessarily because if they're not ripe, they're going to damage your fruit if, if it's for consumption. Right, so after we have collected the fruits in the fields, we bring them back to an area where we could extract them. And we extract, we extract the seeds by hand. We wash them and we remove the seed coat. The seed coat is just the layer, little layer over the seed itself. It's like a, a fine skin, like a brown skin. Removing this coat would allow the next process, which is the disinfection process, to be more effective and it will also help in the germination process. So the next important step is to prepare bags or pots for sowing. At Santa Garcia Trees, we use bags. Because the avocado plants have a shallow, expansive root system, they require a certain amount of space for the roots to develop. And at Center Gerson Nations, we use a plant bag which is 8 inches in diameter and 10 inches in depth. And we try to use our soil mixture, which is one part manure, three parts topsoil, and one part sharp sand. This mix would produce the ideal environment for germination and root development. It would not retain a lot of moisture, and it, it would have a nice nutrient load for the plant in the early stages of development. Now, before you plant the seed in the soil, it should be sterilized to control the same pests and diseases we spoke about earlier. 
And you could do this by drenching the bags with a fungicide and an insecticide, or you could cover them with a piece of plastic or tapo that is, that is water resistant and allow it to set out in the heat. And the heat from the sun would sterilize any seeds that would cause weeds. It would also sterilize any pathogens that remain present in the soil. Avocado is like slightly acidic soil, and a soil with a pH of 5.5 to 6.5 is adequate. Once we have prepared the bags and we have cleaned the seeds, the next thing we want to do is make sure that the seeds in the bags are in an adequate environment for germination and, and development. So what we try to do is to create an environment where we could control the shade and humidity. And we do this with shade cloth and a structure there over the plant it will be the area where we have the plants. And to start the process, we start the plants at 75% germination. This means 75% shade. This means only 70, only 25% of the light from the sun is allowed to reach the plant. And while the plants are in the germination stage, we would want this amount of light to enter. After the plants have been grafted, we want to increase the amount of light they're getting to 50%. After the plants have been grafted and fully developed, we switch them out, they get full sunlight so they can start to develop to a stage where they could be planted out in the field and grow in regular conditions. Now, the second most important thing to control while the plants are developing is the amount of water we're giving them. So for in the initial stages of germination, and after the plants have been removed from the have fully developed the grafting process, we will do overhead irrigation. This could be by a sprinkler or a hose or any other method that we choose to implement, but at St. Augustine Industries, we use overhead sprinklers. However, while the plant is developing, and that when it's been grafted, we would not want to water the plants overhead. We don't want water to enter the point that we made the union. And the last most important thing for the germination development of the plant is to make sure that the plants are in a secure area. Where excess amount of rain and wind could affect them. So the shake lot serves another purpose here. So it protects them from the rain and from the wind. All right, so after we get our seeds clean and we make sure we have bags with nice soil, that we have a good area to place them, we want to sow the seed. Now, again, before we sow the seed, we like to drench with a fungicide to make sure there's no fungus affecting any plant during this germination stage. Now, we sow the seed in the middle of the bag with the peak facing upwards. The reason we do this is because the shoot emerges from this peak. And if we don't place the peak facing upwards, you will end up with a plant that is bent or spiral. And that would not be good for the next process of grafting. We want an upright plant to make sure that it's suitable for grafting. Right, so once we, we sow the seed properly, we're supposed to get the seed germinating in two to three weeks' time. At this time, it is very important to make sure that the plant receives an adequate amount of water because the seed needs an adequate amount of water 
to imbibe. When we say imbibe, we mean that the seed will absorb water and all the substances and other stored nutrients in the seed would activate. All the enzymes would activate and cause the growth process to begin. And all the nutrients within the seed would feed the shoot and the root system to become a young plant. Now, while this is taking place and the shoot starts to develop, we apply fungicides and insecticides weekly to make sure that no pests or disease affect the young plant. We also apply fertilizer weekly in the initial stages when we are trying to get the young plant, which is now a rootstock plant. We're trying to get the plant thickened up so that we could graft it. We apply a nitrogen rich fertilizer. After it's been grafted and developing, we give it more balanced fertilizers and try to add more fertilizers with calcium and magnesium. During the whole process, we perform some practices, cultural practices. We grade the plants according to the size and stage of development because all the rootstock seedlings will not be able, will not be able to be grafted at the same time. And we perform hand weeding. We remove the weeds from around the seed growing in the bag. Another important thing is that we prune the excess shoots. Sometimes it could get three, four, up to five shoots emerging from a seed. We only want one because we only want to graft one. Sometimes the seeds will germinate and we want to remove those seeds and replace them. And sometimes the bags will need a little bit of excess soil. We top them up and make sure they're up the mark. And one of the most important practices we could do is to keep records. We need to know where the seeds came from. We need to know how long they were sown, and we need to know any other changes that would be relevant to the germination. Because if anything goes wrong, we need to be able to reference back to try and fix the problem. So after we sow the seed and we made sure all those conditions are optimal, three to six weeks should pass, and the rootstock, which is now the young plant, would have a stem about a quarter inch thick, which is roughly pencil size. It would be about 12 to 18 inches. The color of the stem and the tips of the leaves will also appear purple. So now we are going to prepare to perform the actual graft. So to, to perform the actual graft, the materials that are required, we need the young plant that we just talked about, the young rootstock plant, we need some strong, flexible, clear polythene plastic strips. And we cut them about 2 inches by 12 inches. Or you could use grafting tape of that particular size. You also need a thin, sharp blade with a good handle that is comfortable to hold in your hand. And you need something to sterilize the blade. You could use a 5% bleach and water solution. The last thing you would need is a label with relevant information. And the information you put on the label, the variety that you grafted, the date, any other thing that you deem to be important, perhaps the person who grafted. Right, so once we have all our materials and our young rootstock plant is in a condition to be grafted, we can start to prepare. And again, the condition the plant, the young rootstock plant should be in, it should be healthy in appearance, exhibiting vigorous growth, and it shouldn't be affected by any pests or disease. And a good indicator is that the stems and the leaves would turn purple. 
Now the stem again will be quarter inch thick, and that is the requirement for doing this method that we do here, the cleft or the wedge grafting technique. For the study process, we make a cut, removing the top or the crown of the rootstock. We make that cut about four to six inches above the soil level. After we cut the top off of the seedling, we make a split in the middle of the top of the cut that was made to the depth of about one to two inches. Now we need to make sure that the depth complements the wedge or the shape of the cyan, which we will now talk about preparing. Now the cyan or the graft wood is immature. is the mature tip taken from the mature plant, right? The best time to take this is early in the morning because that is the time the plant will be under the least amount of stress. When you take this cutter now, this the cyan, you make sure you transport it in a closed container with a damp cloth to keep it out of direct heat for light to prevent desiccation. Or desiccation is the loss of moisture, and it is something that we don't want to happen to the plant at any stage going forward. Now, as I said, the material that we take should be from a parent tree that is known to produce mature fruit of a consistent and desirable quality. Whether that be a large fruit, a large quantity of fruits, or fruits that are resistant to a pest or disease, or the tree itself should be resistant to pest or disease, or some desirable tree. The branch tip should be taken from the plant in its last mature flush. When I say last mature flush, I mean that it will be the last growing tip of the season where the branch is young, green, and flexible, but not soft. And the spacing of the leaves on the tip should be uniform, showing that it's actively growing. The growing point of the plant as well, of the branch as well, shouldn't be soft, it should be rubbery. Now you also want to remove all the leaves from the cyan to prevent it from losing water through transpiration. Because even though it's cut off the plant, it's still alive, right? it will still be going through these biological processes. You would also take an excessive length from the sand to allow space for adjustments later on. Now, in most cases, you want to use the sand immediately to prevent it from desiccating or being exposed to any kind of pathogen or contaminant. But in cases where you want to store it for another time, you could do so for up to three months at five degrees Celsius in a sterilized, damp, dark environment. Now, after you harvested your cyan out in the field from the mature plant, you want to bring it and prepare it to put into the rootstock. Now, as we said, the rootstock should be quarter inch in diameter. The cyan should be of a similar diameter. And you should prepare it by making a wedge cut down towards the end of the cyan on the both sides, creating the wedge. Now this tapered cut would be around one to two inches long and form a V. As you can see here in the picture, the exposed area would show different layers within the branch. And the white layer that you see in the tennis white layer is what we call the cambium layer. That is the layer within the plant, within the branch, that deals with all the growth and development processes. 
it's important to take note of that because that is the point at which we want to make contact with the rootstock to form the union that would create the grafted plant. Now, this is how we place the cyan into the rootstock. As I said, you need to be careful and make sure that the cambium layers, which is the white outline that we saw, is making contact with the same layer within the rootstock of the plant. Without making sure that these layers properly contact, we will not have a successful union. Right, so after we place our cyan into the rootstock, we need to make sure and wrap it. We wrap it tightly with the plastic in a manner that we will not allow for moisture or any other thing to enter. And the main thing is that we do not allow moisture to enter or leave. So that is the goal here, to wrap it tightly now and make sure that moisture doesn't enter or leave. If too much moisture enters the, the union, we could cause it to rot. If too much moisture leaves, we could cause it to desiccate. After we wrap it with plastic, the plant is now referred to as being in tip and will remain that way until we see that the union is healed. At this point, we would affix the label. Right, so after the plant has, the seed has been sown and germinated after three weeks and the rootstock has developed to the thickness and size that we want after a further six, six weeks and we grafted it, it would remain in that grafted state in tape for another six to eight weeks. During this time, the point at which the two pieces, the cyan and the rootstock, contacted each other would form a union. And the union is the point at which the cambium layers join and form what is called a callus. Now, once you could observe this callus, you will know that the layers have successfully fused and you're on your way, you are on your way to having a successfully grafted plant. When the callus forms properly, it would protrude and give the plastic a sunken appearance. That is another indicator that the union has been taken properly. At this point, you should carefully remove the tape and discard it. Now, in this picture here, we could see the colors more clearly. In the V shape, it is brown, and we see top of the plant, the graph, growing. After we untape the plant, we should start to adapt it to full sunlight. We call this process of placing it in full sunlight hardening. When the plant is hardened, it is in the final stage of being a grafted plant and it, a grafted plant seedling and it could be placed in the open field and transplanted afterwards. After untaping, this process of hardening could take up to three to four months. After the plant reaches the stage of development, it needs to be planted out as soon as possible because we don't want the roots to get overgrown. Remember we, we spoke about avocado plants having a 
shallow expansive root system, we don't want to allow the plant to be overgrown, the richer state weight would be at a disadvantage to create in the shallow expansive root system. So you want to transplant your plant as soon as possible once it's in your state to be transplanted. Now we have here in this picture an example of an avocado, a grafted avocado plant ready for transplanting. And now I'm going to tell you how you could select a plant, a grafted avocado plant for grafting. After all these processes that we went through, this development and grafting and whatnot, the plant should not show any signs of pests and disease. The variety and the characteristics of the variety should be known. The union made by the graph, which we could see in this picture here, is quite prominent. It looks like it's it's very strong. <coughs> the plant should be should not be over two feet tall, and it should exhibit a uniform growth pattern and a canopy of branches. When you say a canopy, you mean right around the plant, there's an equal amount of branches creating an equal amount of root. And again, the root should not be overgrown or protruding out of the bag or looking like it's bound inside the bag. And in general, a grafted plant should not be more than eight to 10 months old before you transplant it. This is a mature avocado, a mature grafted avocado tree out in the field. Once you selected, based on the parameters we just spoke about, you will get a nice healthy plant like that, spread out nice, nice canopy, exhibiting good growth. These are the references we use for this presentation. These are some members of staff we would like to acknowledge, and we would like to thank you all for attending this presentation, and we want you to hold on while we conduct a live draft and demonstration on some plants we have right here. Okay, here we have our avocado rootstock. Right. That will terminate it probably two to three weeks old. And what we're going to do, the method to graph an avocado is what we call a terminal graph, where a wedge is necessary for the union of the two things, rootstock and the cyan. Now, a terminal graph, we need to actually remove part of the rootstock. Right. And by doing that, we need to make a slit in the center, you see? directly in the center, probably inch and a half, two inches deep, right? Now what we're doing here, the cambium from either side of the stem, when we join our cyan material, it will heal together and make a plant. That is the whole science of it, of the grafting. Science of the grafting is to take two stem, place it together, and let it become one. That is where we are plant. This is our cyan. We actually remove all the leaves from the avocado cyan. Right? And we trim. We trim off all the rough edges here so that the cyan will fit comfortable inside the wedge. Now, to make this wedge, we will cut just the skin deep of the cyan material, just removing the skin. We do not want to go too deep inside, or else you cut it and it will dry. And turn on the other side, and we just cut off here. Now, at the base, we make something like a wedge, so that it will fit neatly inside there. And I'm taking it, I'm placing it 
into the rooster. Now for this to be a successful graph, we need to secure these two stems together by using transparent plastic cut it over desired length and we begin to wrap at the bottom. Make one wrap very tightly, hold it in place. As I'm a right hander, I'm using my left hand to hold the stem and the tape together. And I begin to wrap all the way upwards. When I reach to the top, I just uh, firm the cyan or the bottle a little lower into the use top and I begin to wrap. I make two or three wrap. The above of the rooster where I cut. Now, this is for to prevent excess water from getting in into here or as it cause it to rot. And this stay here for a period of about two or two to three months in tea. Now, while that time, this cyan material here will develop, send new shoots, new leaves, and it will develop into a a plant. When that happens, when the leaves start to develop, then you remove the tape. This tape stays here until this cyan material develops into a plant first. Also, there is an indication when the plant is growing, the plastic tends to sink in. That is also an indication to remove your plastic. If you remove this plastic too early, seen as a wedge is cut on both sides, this can easily fall off and your graphing will not be successful. Hi, so now we have a grafted plant here. So now later we're going to get some avocados to make use of avocado choca. And we really appreciate you all taking the time to look at this video and learn about this propagating process. And we hope that you will follow us in the future to learn more about the minor fruits ornamental plants that we have right here in our division in Agriculture. Thank you very much. Bye.